favourite memory? That's an ask. Um, probably CoxCon 2019. There was the time I got back to my hotel room and I found Dan in my bathtub. I don't know how he got there. Uh, but from what I could piece together through the, the, the mumbling and the excessive racial slurs uh, was uh, that he'd had a bad experience with a fan. You know, they, they, they preferred everyone else on the panel. Uh, they actually booed him off. And uh, he was just drenched in vomit. I think he'd been like comfort drinking. And I had to shower him down. But, you know, we bonded over that. And the smell did linger. But so did the memories. Oh, <laughs> right. So there's one time we drove all the way from Norwich to Blackpool uh, for a convention, a retro gaming convention, and we had to, we ended up like stuck in this ridiculous rundown hotel. Oh, no, hang on, that was nostalgia nerd. Well, that would have to be the time when Nerdcubed asked me to answer questions for the 10th anniversary celebration video. I mean, I feel very special right now, Dan. I think my favourite Dan memory was more of a cumulative memory, which is whenever I, because I'm subscribed to Dan, all, all, all cool people should be, um, whenever I do watch one of his videos, it always seems to be one where he mentions me, which has left me with the assumption that I mention in every video he does. He'll just, he'll just throw, you know, a mention of me, something I said, or more often than not, kind of just a disclosure that he knows me. And it seems to be in every video I've watched, so I'm hoping that it's not all of them. Um, but I kind of also hope it is all of them in a way, so I don't know, including this one. My favorite Dan memory is when we started our podcast and he brought all those people from the UK over to our channel. And we were like set. We were good to go. Like no yeah. effort on our part. Yeah, Let's we just get to, this really, really tall did, British guy. We really yeah. didn't have to work anymore after that. We, we didn't have to worry he about. He really it. did. He really did all the heavy lifting for us in the very beginning. He We've been riding his everything. coattails for the last what six, seven years now. We've been riding yeah. his coattails. Yeah, it's kind of great. The gravy train keeps on giving, Larson, and his name is Dan Nerd. Truly, Kurt. truly, I, I will never forget though sitting. Recording voiceover for that uh, collaboration thing that Machinima set up for us. I was sitting mm -hmm. in my uh, in my closet because at the time that was like the quietest place I could do or go to record voiceover. Yeah. And what was supposed to be a quick little twenty minute voiceover session ended up being an hour and a half conversation. Yeah. Where we spent most of the time talking about wrestling, mm -hmm. and from that conversation, literally during the conversation, uh, I believe it was you that said, "Hey, this sounds like a podcast." And what did Dan say after that? And we should call it Going In Raw. And I was like, what a great idea. Whereas deep down, I'm like, we'll never be able to sell any advertisements on it. But I have to keep this going because I want this guy's audience. And then and then they, they came. It was great. I was on a charity stream last year, Diotio Productions, for Transmuth. And Matt and Dan came along to play Jackbox Party Pack. That's kind of all we really need to know. Booze was involved. Um, we had a really good time. So that is up there in my like really good memories of uh, Nerdcubed community times. Okay, no joke, back when I was a really small YouTuber and I was still working a full-time job as well as doing YouTube, I got a DM from Dan and at that point I was a really small channel and I freaked the flip out. Like, I immediately DM'd Claire and I believe my exact wording was, Claire, this is not a drill, Nerdcubed just DM'd me, oh my god. So yes, uh, I'd say the first time Dan very kindly reached out back when I was a tiny baby YouTuber. I will never forget that moment. I was playing Breath of the Wild for my gaming channel and we collaborated and he talked to me about how much he hated Breath of the Wild while we played Breath of the Wild. So that was fun. My favorite memory with Daniel would probably be him DMing me to be in one of his videos and then me responding too late to be in that video. Great times. He really does fucking smell, though. <laughs>
He doesn't. I just want to make it clear. 